Hey everyone, you're watching Ready Set Drone, and today we have the Ruko F11 Pro 2, which Chris, is- Chris, 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 what are you doing? I'm just gonna unbox the new drone from Ruko. Ruko, Chris, weren't you there when we promised our audience we would not do any more shitty camera drone reviews? The minute you buy a $100 to $300 drone that promises the world, I guarantee you're gonna be disappointed. Quit asking me to review these drones because I'm not doing any more. I did my last one today and I'm out of here. I have a feeling this is gonna be different. Can you just give this a chance, please? <laughs> oh no. Let's cut to the chase. The Ruko F11 Pro 2 costs around $450 it has a mechanical three axis gimbal. It records video at 4K 30 and takes 6K images. And it has some other features like GPS follow, route planning, and fly around. We're gonna test out those features, see if the video and picture quality is decent and what the overall user experience is with this drone. So let's take it out for its first flight. At the end of the video, if you're still around, we'll show how to set this up and what is in the box. This will be our first flight with Ruko's F11 Pro 2, and we'll be judging the drone for what it is. But we do have some basic expectations, as well as some claims from Ruko's website that we're gonna put to the test. Of course, we are gonna keep in mind the price of this drone while making our judgments of it. But in the past, our experience with budget drones has never been good. In fact, they've really upset Kelly. Oh no, Kelly, are you okay? These drones are killing me! But those drones were half the price of this one, could not hover in place, and the recorded video was pretty unusable. Because the Ruko F11 Pro 2 has a mechanical gimbal, I don't think it will let me down, but I'm about to find out. Long press to turn the drone on. And same with the remote. Even though the instructions say to short press and then long press, a simple long press turns on the controller. Now the controller is going to keep on beeping for about 20 seconds, until it connects to the drone. This happens every single time. Now that this has stopped beeping, I'm going to connect the controller to my phone. I did put an SD card in the drone and now it's asking me to format. I wanna set this up for success, so I'm gonna hit the compass button right here and that'll start the calibration mode. So now we should be ready to go. The first test I wanna do is just a hover test. So I'll move the sticks down and in to start the motors and then take off. And it seems to be doing a pretty decent job right now. Next thing I want to check is the horizon. See how level it is. So the horizon is looking pretty level. Let me check the range of the gimbal by turning the wheel here. So the gimbal does not tilt up, just points straight forward and then 90 degrees downward. So let me go ahead and switch it to video mode and check my settings here. My return to home altitude, let's make it 120 feet or so. I want to record at 4K 30, and that all looks good, so I'm going to go back and start recording. So I've actually taken my hands off the sticks, and the drone is still rotating. So if I rotate a little bit left, if I yaw left, it tends to move a little bit when I'm not doing anything. There are two speed modes on here. If I hit the speed button, this is stable mode. Looks like 12 miles an hour. And then I'll hit speed mode again, and this is sport mode, 17 miles an hour. Whoa, the yaw is kind of crazy. It's like, has like a delayed reaction. I'm flying straight right now, and it's drifting to the right. My thumb is going straight forward, but it's definitely drifting right. Let me bring it closer to where I am. This drone does not have obstacle avoidance, so I need to avoid obstacles myself. See if I can make it through that tree gap over there. No, not that one, whoa. It does appear to be a little bit drunk and I don't think I can precisely aim it where I want. Now the video feed has been pretty rock solid this whole time and the latency is also quite bearable. Again, keeping the price in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and press return to home. Return home. See how well it makes it back to the landing pad. It's descending right now and it's gonna go on top of the camera, which is not ideal. It's about to land, let me just stop. So the landing pad is where it took off from and the drone was trying to land right here. So it's about six feet off. Let me uh, 
go ahead and manually land it. Easier said than done, actually. It does drift quite a bit. Oh, goodness. Hold on. Come back. I'm trying to maneuver it on the landing pad. It's very, very difficult, but I got it. Okay. Well, that was a little bit stressful. Let's test out some of the features of the drone. Ooh, we're getting some bounce back with the yaw. It's yawing left, even though I was yawing right. So I'm going to yaw right. Stop. See how it's bouncing back? It is drifting like crazy, actually. And that little star on the top of the screen is supposed to indicate how much interference the drone has. Let me take a few photos. I'm going to switch to photo mode. So I'm going to tap this menu here and go ahead and hit GPS follow. GPS follow startup failed. Is it not high enough? So if it's too low, it won't GPS follow. Um, but let's go ahead and enable GPS follow. I don't know where it's looking, but I'm over here. I'm like barely in the shot. Does it even have me? No, it doesn't even have me in the screen. All right, let me try to walk into view. It's turning away from me. I can see my shadow, but that's about it. Okay, let me stop it. What if I start it way to my right and then hit GPS follow? So when it goes left, it'll, oh no. I thought I could compensate. I'm gonna land and try recalibrating everything and see if that'll help the situation. I'm gonna go to the landing pad. Oh goodness, no, no, no. Oh, it crashed. Oh, it just decided to hit the tree trunk, but it appears to be okay. I was trying to land it so I could recalibrate things. Yeah, that was a fail. Now that I've recalibrated everything, I want to try GPS follow one more time and see if it does any better or if it's just going to crash into a tree again. Let me uh, center myself in the image, hit GPS follow. It's definitely not freaking out this time, which is nice. So it is keeping track of me a lot better now. When I'm moving around, it's a little bit jerky, like it kind of adjusts in increments rather than smoothly. What happens if I go under it? Okay, it's gonna reverse and try to keep me in the shot, which it did pretty well. Now, if I go towards it, is it going to back up? Or, okay, now it's not sure what to do. I've basically just walked right under the drone. It's kind of looking around. Oh, it's turned around. And it sort of has me in the shot. Oh, now it's gone somewhere else. Where are you going? Let me cancel that. Let's try flight around. Oh, you know what? Maybe flight around is flying around where the drone was located. So I'm going to put the drone directly above me and then I will tap flight around. So now it's going to go up and back and I'll just point the camera down so it can see me. There we go. That's better. Okay. Since I've recalibrated, I'd like to see if I can fly in a straight line now. Let's just go straight forward. Yeah, it's drifting right now. So yeah, precise flying is not very easy. I'm trying to get a, a shot of this little lake by moving to the right and yawing a little bit to the left. So I'm not able to yaw a tiny bit to the left. It's just kind of stop and go. Again, this is a budget drone, so I'm keeping that in mind, but just wanted to report my experience. If I'm flying straight and pitching up, that seems very good, actually. So after that crash into the tree, the arms are looking good. Everything's intact, but I don't want to tell Kelly about that. I want to let him take it for a flight and just see what his first impressions are. But before that, let's try a route planning mission. I have to mention that the format of the SD card is FAT32 in the drone, and so they don't show up on a Mac. I had to use a PC in order to copy the files over. Even though there was a pro in the name, F11 Pro 2. I don't believe there's a way to change the camera settings. It's just all auto all the time. Got a cool lens flare happening right there. All right, let's try a route planning mission. I'll select route planning. So using the pen, 
Tap one, two, three, four, five. Let's do one more over there. Okay, let's go ahead and upload that. Looks like it's going to the first point. It appears that the route planning is just going to fly forwards. There's no option to set where the camera is going to be pointed. Let me uh, tilt down while it's flying, see if I can do that. I wonder if I'm able to yaw while it's flying. Can I yaw? Oh. Any kind of stick movement cancels the route planning mission. It's a very basic feature. You're not able to fly sideways or choose where you want the camera to be pointed, except, you know, moving the gimbal up and down. All right, so this is just regular mode and the sun's about to go down. Night mode. Just a lot more contrast. The quality kind of looks more degraded. Vertical screen basically crops in on the sensor. You can take photos and you can also take video. Let me land and see, uh, whoa, what's going on there? It's trying to land. Oh, it was jump. It was bouncing up and down. Whoa. Uh-oh. What's going on? Oh goodness. That was kind of scary, but we did not crash. Let's try one more flight. I just put in a new battery and I've noticed that every time I reconnect, I have to close the app and then open it up again. That way I can get my camera view back online when I hit connect. All right, after that scary landing, I want to try one more flight and see if that happens again. I'm calibrating the compass once more and then we shall see if this does any better. And start the props. Take off. Oh, it's doing that on its own. What's it doing? It's drifting like crazy. I need to land. Oh, shoot. Oh, goodness. That was not good. Compass calibration. I did that already. That was a hard crash. I feel like we're still okay. I don't really trust this drone anymore. It has been doing some wild things. Well, after two crashes, it's still in the air and the propellers are fine. I guess that's a good thing in terms of the ruggedness, but the fact that it crashed twice and it was kind of out of control both times makes me really, really worry about flying this around any objects or vehicles that it might crash into. I would like to try cruise control and see how useful that is. I think cruise control is the top left button on the controller. So let's say I wanted to fly forward and then continue flying forward. So I'm gonna hit the cruise control button and now I've let go of my hands and it's flying forward. So I'm gonna hit the button again and now it's disabled. Now I'm gonna try flying backwards and then I'll hit cruise control and now it's flying backwards. Okay, so that's a genuinely good feature that seems to be working well. I wonder if cruise control works with two stick movements. For example, if I want to go sideways to the right and also yaw to the left while I'm going, it only continues the right stick. Again, this is a $400-ish drone, so not all features are in-depth. Well, I can't wait for Kelly to try this.
So Chris let me fly the Ruko, and I have to say it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. The sticks feel kind of loose. The Ruko definitely uh, drifted up and down quite a bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. And it just dropped like five feet. Level five wind resistance. This is probably level two right now. I wasn't touching the stick at all, and it was just going up and down like a good five or six feet without any input. And it was a little laggy in its controls. Like as I would start to yaw, it would take it a second and then it would start slow and then kind of speed up on the yaw. And as I was flying forward, if I would let go of the stick, it didn't stop very quickly. It kind of just kept drifting for a moment. Overall, it just felt like a little bit of a inferior flying experience compared to other drones of a similar size that I've flown. I don't know if the footage is any good. I'm curious to see what it looks like. Overall though, for a price of 400 to 450 bucks, it's not my first choice. Here's everything that comes in the box. First of all, the carrying case feels good quality. The controller has this handy guide on it for beginners to reference, which is quite helpful. There are three cables, USB-C, micro USB, and lightning for connecting your phone to the controller, which I'll do in a second. One thing I thought was missing was a charger for the batteries and the controller, but the batteries themselves each have a USB-C port on the side, as well as the RC. There are two USB-C cables in the box, but there isn't a charging brick, so you'll have to use your own. Ruko actually did confirm you can use a fast charger on the batteries and the RC. There's a full set of spare props with a screwdriver, as well as screws and this little plastic piece to secure the props in place. There are two extra sticks for the controller as well. It doesn't come with any installed, but down here you can see is where they are stored. So I'll go ahead and put them on and then begin the setup process. There's a user manual and a flight guide and safety disclaimer included as well. There is no micro SD card included, so you'll have to add your own, but here's the slot for that. To replace the battery, underneath the drone is the battery release button, which I'll press and then I can pull the battery out. And that confirms that I've charged everything up. The first thing to do is Download and install the Ruko Mini app. Then connect the phone to the RC with the provided cable. Turn on the drone first by long pressing the power button, and then turn on the controller by also long pressing the power button. Let me tap on control. There is a quick tutorial which is helpful for beginners. You will have to insert your own SD card into the drone. If you want to turn off beginner mode to increase your flight distances, just tap the toggle here. Then just follow the on-screen instructions to calibrate the drone. If you tap on the drone icon on the top right of the screen, you'll see some useful information, including the UAS ID. Use that number when you register with the FAA. Ruko does provide helpful instructions on how to do this. If you want to change your units of measure, tap on the other tab. And that's about it for the setup process. Well, thanks to Ruko for sending us this drone to review. The reason we said yes was the fact that it has a three axis gimbal, which definitely provides a lot more usable video. However, at $400, I have some expectations, such as being able to return to home on the landing pad, to be able to hover in place without going out of control and crashing into something, and to be able to maintain a level horizon, which seems like a problem that should have been solved several years ago. This is not the cheapest drone you can buy, and you can get some decent footage out of it, so it does have some value, and I really like that the batteries can charge via USB. That's a great feature to have, but the whole user experience did not live up to my expectation, and I cannot trust this drone. And that's kind of the worst feeling when you're flying a drone and you don't know if it's gonna take off in one direction or the other suddenly. To the three people who are still watching this video at this point, we'd love to know what you think. Has our opinion been out of line? Are we being fair? Are we being too hard on it? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching Ready Set Drone. See you next time.